Hey, what's going on, you guys? Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Joseph Bonner, and today on the show, we're going to be talking about two reasons why people want to commit suicide and then how to fight those reasons. And I really felt that this show was important to do because I feel like there's so much content out there about, you know, if you feel suicidal, call this number, or if you feel suicidal, do these things. And I think all those resources are fantastic and wonderful. But personally, I've been there before where there's been times where I've contemplated suicide. And so for me, I feel that it would be nice, especially when you're going through those mental and emotional crises, that you can actually find some content that actually can verify or not verify, but more like, I guess you could say validify your personal feelings in the emotional turmoil that you're that you're experiencing, but at the same time provide you a solution. So sometimes before you can help people deal with things like suicidal thoughts, you need to first be able to connect with them and let them know that you understand what they're going through. So this particular show is to first let people know who are suffering from suicidal thoughts that, yeah, we get it. We know what you're going through. But then let's talk about some solutions to help combat those things that obviously does not involve you know, committing suicide. Now, for those of us who have ever contemplated suicide, we don't need to know the statistics. We don't need to understand how very real the pain is of those who suffer and feel like taking their own life. However, most of us who who have ever contemplated in the past don't actually want to die. We want to merely end the pain. So in this list of two reasons why people want to commit suicide, we're going to talk about ways to help alleviate the pain and help you to have a productive and positive life. So one of the reasons which I found very common in people who want to take their life is their feelings over their past mistakes. Some people, because of their past mistakes or even perceived past mistakes, feel like life's not worth living. I'll give you an example. Some people maybe who have fought all their life with substance abuse and blame themselves for the decisions they made in their youth. It may be someone's decision to maybe go somewhere or trust somebody that resulted in more pain and suffering for them. As a result, that person may blame themselves for the pain and suffering that they've experienced and then falsely reason that they don't deserve to live. Now, here's what I want to say about that, okay, about mistakes, because sometimes our mistakes sometimes can <laughs> lead us to not want to be here on this earth. Here's a solution to that, okay? It's important for us to remember that making mistakes is a part of growing up and it's a part of the human experience. We as humans learn from trial and error. And because we are all imperfect, it's actually, guess what? Believe it or not, it's actually impossible to make a good decision every time. That being the case, suicide would only compound one bad decision with another. And instead of bringing peace, we would actually be believing behind a big, huge problem for others to emotionally and mentally navigate through. Now, I want to make sure that I, I, I really bring this to the forefront. Stop blaming yourself for past mistakes. Okay, no one's perfect. No one makes perfect decisions all the time. We all make mistakes. You are human. You are allowed to be human. You are allowed to make errors sometime in judgment. You are allowed to make mistakes. But you are not allowed to hold that against yourself for the rest of your life. You deserve better. And the reason why suicide is not a solution because of past mistakes it, 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 it's, it's clear because when we take our own life, we actually leave behind emotional and mental you know, turmoil for others. And, and me speaking personally, I, where I've interviewed parents of children who took their life, I mean, the emotional baggage that these parents face as a result of not having their child here anymore, is horrific. Now, I was going to tell you this personal example, but if you actually want to read this example, you actually have to go to the website on the josephbonner.com under the blog post, um, two reasons why people want to take their life. I kind of don't feel comfortable telling this story over the air, only because I actually interviewed this mother on, on one of my shows a couple of years ago. But I do want you guys to check out her experience. Um, the young girl, I'll tell you the young girl's name. Her name was Cassidy. And um, she was a young 15-year-old girl who committed suicide in 2015. If you want details on what happened and how it affected the mother, I definitely want to encourage you to go to the blog on the website and check that out. But I do want to say this, that when I got a chance to interview um, Cassidy's mother, Linda, um, she was such um, such a beautiful woman. And I would say that probably one of the only parents that I personally interviewed where I felt – because I'm – and. and 
I want to say this and I, and I don't want to sound judgmental because I get it. Being a parent is a hard job and saying the right thing all the time to our children. It's absolutely impossible. But the reason why um, Linda's situation spoke to me personally is that I felt that Linda as a parent did everything right. She did everything right, you guys. Like when I say everything, I mean literally everything to help her daughter. And her daughter, you know, still ended up taking her life. And so I want you to know that suicide does not bring peace. It doesn't. It doesn't. It just brings a whole mess of other problems. And it's not fair to you who've lived your life to end your life on that kind of note. And it's and, and obviously it's not fair to others in your life who love you to have to suffer through that. So um, if it's past mistakes you're concerned about, I want you to I want you to give yourself a pass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Give yourself a pass and say, hey, guess what? It's okay. Welcome to the club. Welcome to humanity. We're like everyone else, we make mistakes and it's okay. Now I want to move on to number two because I feel like this is a big one right now. There was a suicide recently in the downtown area that I presently reside in. I'm not going to necessarily tell you what city I live in just because I got some stalkers out there. Stalkers! Not playing. Um, <laughs> but no, the downtown area in San Diego. And uh, over the weekend, there was a man who jumped from a parking structure downtown. And when he jumped from the building, he actually landed on a a young girl and she died. So... Suicide is horrific, right? It, it took his life, it took her life, and now the community is mourning both of them. And, and one of the reasons, and this goes back to number two, the second reason why some people want to take their life is financial problems. Do you guys remember that story about the young 20-year-old Illinois man who committed suicide after believing he had a $730,000 balance on his Robinhood trading account? Um, I, it was it was Alexander Kearns. He was just a young kid, you know, and it ended up being a system error. Like it was like just a mistake the app made. But by the time that they reached out to clarify to this young man and, 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 and in all fairness, it, it they, they clarified it like a couple of days after the error happened, but it, but a couple of days was too late. He took his life. So I want to say this, if you're facing extreme financial situations and problems right now, Every financial problem is very manageable. And I'm about to drop some knowledge on you right now. I'm about to drop some some gold nuggets on you right now because I want you to be I want you to understand that financial issues it's not the end of the world. You know, 8 years ago, I fell into some really really difficult financial times. I was homeless, penniless. I mean, I was going through it, you guys. I was going through it. But I'm going to tell you this, and there were many times where I'm like, why am I here? Like, are you curious? Like, are, you, are you joking? Like, where's Ashton at? Am I being punked? Right? Is this really life right now? My life? It was. Um, but I remember feeling like such a failure, you know, like I cannot believe I'm in this situation. But during that process, I learned a lot of cool things. So if you find yourself in huge debt right now and you're like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? You do realize, right? Now, this isn't to be construed as legal advice to you, okay? I'm not a lawyer, but I do want to drop some knowledge on you. You know, Chapter 7 and 11 bankruptcy are legal provisions available to you by the United States should you need to avail yourself of them. So if you feel that your financial situation is becoming so critical that you just cannot pay your creditors and you're going crazy, maybe you need to re... um Maybe you, need, maybe you need to restructure your debt or maybe you just need to eliminate it all together. Then you really want to, you know, maybe consult a lawyer and consider Chapter 7 R11 bankruptcy. Now, for me at the time when I was going through my financial crisis, I could not afford a lawyer. So I was like, well, man, I want to file for bankruptcy. I can't even afford that. I think with lawyer fees were like $1,000. I'm like, come on now. If I had $1,000, I wouldn't be filing for bankruptcy, right? <laughs> so anyways, make a long story short, I actually found this really cool website it was, a, it was a nonprofit organization. They're called Upsolve. So Upsolve is a nonprofit organization. And what they do is they actually help you to organize your, you know, your bankruptcy filing. They do all the paperwork for you for free. And they even help you to get a free waiver to file your bankruptcy. So when I first filed my bankruptcy, I did it all for free. Like I didn't pay a dime. Now, I ended up not going through with the bankruptcy, which was really, really cool. But I mean, if I needed to, I was, I was determined to go through it. So 
you would actually need to pay zero dollars if you actually absolutely had to file for bankruptcy. Upsolve, again, organization, they'll do it all for you for free. The only thing you need to remember, <laughs> and this is one of the reasons why I ended up not filing, because I'm such a I'm such a weirdo. So the only thing that you need to remember, if you do happen to have your meeting for creditors and you go before the judge, make sure you have your ID and your social security card at this meeting, because I forgot on the first one. And then by the time the second one rolled around, I didn't even show up. And I, I cause by then I was fine. Um, <laughs> so I didn't need to avail myself of that legal provision. So uh, you'll have to reschedule. So make sure that if you do have to go through that process, make sure you bring your ID and your social security card if you're in the United States. Now, I'm not too sure what other legal provisions are available for those who are suffering financially in other countries, but obviously you can reach out to various nonprofit organizations and find that out. Or even again, go to my resource page. You might find something there that is of use. So I don't want you... Uh, uh, now, again, we're still stuck on finances. Maybe your financial situation isn't so critical. We need to file for bankruptcy. Here's another solution. Don't be afraid to move back home or move in with your relatives and family members or friends. It's not a sign of your failure. It's more a sign of where the world is right now. <laughs> you know, right now, I, I've, I've read articles on NBC News and some other, you know, big media platforms that teachers, journalists, and other professionals are actually moving back at home just to be able to cope financially. And these people are not young. They're not like in their 20s. They're like 40. So if you're 40 years old and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm 40 years old and I got to be back home with my parents. Do what you got to do. Whatever. You know, so it was so cool because like I say it was so cool, like personally, because they got a chance to actually like move into some of their old rooms, like when they were kids. And like in some cases, like their rooms were like exactly identical to how they were, like when they were, when they were like growing up as teenagers. I think it's a blessing, man, to get a chance to, you know, go back home, maybe just restart, start your life over, you know, restart, recharge and enjoy it. Do you remember? OK, do you guys remember how it was like being kids when we didn't have any bills and we didn't have to worry about all this extra stuff? And then we became adults and we're like, oh, my gosh, if I only knew what it was like when I was a kid, I would have enjoyed it more. Right. If you're forced to go back home, I'm sorry not to be rude, but enjoy it. And get to know your family again. Reconnect. I'm not saying milk them. You know, don't be a deadbeat, you know, on the couch laying out all day. No, be productive still. But, you know, enjoy the move back home. Look at it as a new learning experience and something that you'll be able to tell your future children, you know, in years to come, should they ever need to move back home if the financial crisis is extreme in their lifetime. So this is going to be all good teaching points that you can use in the future. It's not a reason to end your life. Now, another thing I want to actually um, say as well, yeah, some have tried all of the above things that I've mentioned before, and they still seem to not be able to get ahead. So if you feel that you need some extra support, reach out to your local government office. You know, there are housing and homeless programs in the community, although they're not the best. I know always and maybe not always the safest. These programs can provide you with at least some resources and some perhaps temporary solutions to your situation if you feel you need to avail yourself of them. Now, since some of these programs may take a little bit of time to kind of work through and maybe to even get started at, why not start a GoFundMe account? Reach out to some of your friends, your family, the community for support. Don't be ashamed. Everyone needs help from time to time. We all fall down and we all fall on hard times. Remember, even the U.S. government right now has a $26.70 trillion debt. I'll say that again. A $26.70 trillion debt. So you're, I'm sure that you don't have that much debt going on in your life. So your situation is not hopeless. It is not a reason to end your life. The sun will shine on another day. Um, and that being the case, you guys, keep in mind that if you do feel suicidal, you can contact the suicide hotlines in your particular country that you are residing in and listening to this podcast. For that number, I do want you to see the link in the bottom of this show. Uh, you guys can also go to the josephbotter.com resource page where that will give you a list of numbers that you can reach out to you to if you are feeling suicidal. But I do want you to take this list to heart. Please understand that it is not the end of the world. I understand definitely from personal experience that sometimes we don't necessarily see the end of how things will transpire. But I will say this, you guys, I'm so glad I didn't take my life eight years ago. You know, since then, I've been able to, you know, publish 10 national magazines. I host, you know, some 40 different nationally syndicated podcasts. I feel like today my life is better, but I also feel like the experiences that I've had allow me an opportunity to really connect 
with you guys as as my audience, as my listeners. I, I know it's hard. Life's hard. And I'm I'm actually glad that I faced the experiences that I did face because I feel like it makes me more human, you know? It makes me more at least empathetic to, you know, what other people are going through. And for me, that's what that's what life's all about. It's about connecting with finding a way to positively connect with people in your life or in the community, in the world. So I hope that this show has provided you with some comfort. If you know somebody who you feel can definitely use this list, definitely feel free to send this podcast. You guys, let me know what you think about today's show. Reach out to me anytime on social media at Mr. Joseph Bonner. And until next time, you guys, stay safe. And remember, you are loved and your life is worth it. Your life is worth the fight. It always has been and it always will be.